Hello, I'm Dr. G. And I'm Rev. Kimmy. You guys want to stay tuned. We're going to talk about things that nobody else is in the mainstream. Information about the shooter. That's right. We're going to talk today about the shooter and the attempt on Donald Trump's life. And we found some stuff online, uh, Kimmy, with her investigative skills, um, that uh, we haven't seen anywhere else. Uh, but she did some digging. And if you guys don't know, I'm a litigation and trial paralegal um, for the top at the top law firms of our country. And I'm a criminal justice professor, forensic victimology, and I also was an infantry officer in the Army for <laughs> several years. And uh, so drawing on our backgrounds, uh, digging around online, watching the videos that popped up on TV, we happen to be watching that live. We had it on in the background uh, yesterday. If you guys don't know, I'm I have a... I'm ordained Christian reverend. I have ministry um, gifts that so happen to work on missing person cases or on people's lives. God uses me in many different situ situations. And I'm going to share with you guys a few years back when uh, President Trump was in office, the Lord gave me a prophetic information, a, a vision about an assassination attack attempt on him and I emailed him at the White House and I'm going to share that email in details. I also believe that I discovered through digging around uh, for evidence what is the motive to the shooter. I found an Instagram account and I believe I found his motive. I'm going to share that information with you and know that yes, I did report that finding to the FBI today. That's right. And one of the, it seems like as we read blogs and, and listen to the mainstream media on television, the, one of the biggest controversies right now is the security that was there and the law enforcement snipers, their positioning and everything. And there's even a ridiculous theory out there that this was all staged and that, uh, I mean... How ridiculous yeah, is that? To, to okay, risk so getting hit about, with a bullet wait that a misses you and kills people behind you? Yeah, yeah that mean, is ridiculous. Okay, so it's ketchup? Yeah. It's not real? These yeah. people are faking it? They're not really dead? And one person said that he, he hurt his ear when he got slammed to the ground by the uh, Secret, Secret Service. Service, but he clearly went down That's on his ridiculous. own. But anyway, how did uh, someone get off such a terrible shot? Um, this guy was not a crack shot. He's 20 years old, no military service whatsoever. And what was it you found? I found that um, he tried out um, for in his high school. Mm -hmm. He tried out for a shooting team. Oh, uh -huh. okay. And he did not make the team. And that's one thing that I noted is that I was grateful that he's young, that he doesn't have a lot of experience under his belt to be a good shot and thank goodness you know he he didn't make the team he wasn't able to um fulfill what he wanted to which was to to kill uh, former president trump yeah those are uh, here in minnesota the, that type of team is really big we have trap shooting teams and nra rifle teams at high schools and and even bow bow competitions and stuff like that you know archery yeah it's pretty big um, one of the things I found, too, and this was in an article by the New York Post online, posted today at uh, July 14th, 2024, at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm not going to read it to you, but in summary, a local police officer climbed up a ladder and encountered the shooter. And the shooter rolled over and pointed his weapon at the police officer who immediately ducked, you know, back down the ladder for cover. Um, a, a vest doesn't protect you very well against another weapon at close range like that. You get shot in the leg, the head, you know, all kinds of places. So the officer retreated, and at that time, point in time, the shooter rolled back over and 
reacquired uh, his target candidate, former President Trump, and started squeezing off rounds, and that would account for the lousy shot. But then combined with what you found, Kimmy, the yeah. kid was just a lot, thank God, was yeah, just he a lousy the shot set. to begin with. Yeah. And uh, it's fortunate that that, I mean, all those things were good. The officer interrupted him. But now, people are really critical of these uh, snipers, uh, law enforcement snipers, and granted, they, they should have had an officer. You're talking about the law enforcement yeah. uh, snipers. We would watch that video. I don't know if you guys caught that video of someone filming the snipers up top of the roof prior to, during the shooting. Yeah, yeah. And we can see them sitting towards, um, you know, looking through their scopes. And they are looking in the direction towards the parking lot in front yeah, of them yeah. that's next to the building that the shooter was on. We don't really want to mention his name. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to refer to him as the shooter. So right. um, we, um, so if you're thinking about, so we were like, because when, when the shooting began, the law enforcement snipers pulled away from their guns and looking around yeah. as if giving opportunity for the shooter to shoot at former President Trump. But the thing is, is that I graduated from two law enforcement uh, community academies, uh, Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and Santa Monica Police Department. And the training um, that, that, I mean, it's common sense. If we're looking through a scope and you hear shooting and we can't see it through our narrow scope, right, on the rifle, we would have to pull away, right, from looking through there. Yeah. So, and able to see, like, you'd pull away from the gun Go, where in the world is the shooting coming from, right? So then you see where it's coming from. Now look through the scope again and shoot. So I think a lot of us are being critical. Yeah. Like, what in the world? They gave an opportunity. They didn't see him. They didn't spot him. Well, like I said, I graduated from two academies, right? Police academies. But the thing is, is that, and I'm not in charge. I haven't been tra trained as a sniper or to supervise snipers. But common sense, if I was in charge, I would have, there were two snipers up top, right? I would have one sniper looking through the scope as they both were. The second one should not be looking through the scope, and he should be looking broadly with his eyes and looking around. And if that was the case, if only they were doing that, they both would have, I mean, they, one of them would have spotted him on top of the roof. I believe. Yeah, a shooter and a spotter. That's the best way to, to do it, a shooter and a now, spotter. Now, you were in and the Army. Folks, I was not. Right. Did they train you to yeah. look like that or not? Yeah, and then lots of times we even run machine guns like that. You have the gunner, and then you have the spotter. Because um, when you're down behind the weapon, sometimes it's hard to see. And, and if you're looking through a scope, it even makes it worse. Um if you've never shot through a scope, but you have used a camera with a telephoto on it or a, a lens that will zoom in, it's pretty much the same effect. If you look through it and you're looking at an object that's way, way out there and you haven't zoomed in, from left to right, you might see 200 yards of open terrain in front of you. But as you zoom in, now what's going to happen is that's going to narrow, and it's going to get down to where you might only be able to see 30 yards of terrain from right to left, left to right in front of you. And, and the more you zoom in, the smaller that gets to a, you know, gets to a point where you might only have a field of view that's about 10 yards wide or maybe even less. So if that's what the sniper, law enforcement snipers were doing, they could have been looking in the general direction, but the shooter wasn't in their field of view. So they had to pop their head up to acquire the target and shift their weapons over to him. And that's what I'm saying. I think that I'm just going to say I believe that Secret Service did a great job from the moment they're shooting the shooter and going forwards from there. Right. However, I believe that this is their fault that this occurred based on the fact that one one sniper was not looking with his natural eyes 
Right. And there, going through there them. There should have been a cop on top so, of every building within two miles and drones in the air. And So with that, with be, saying that, we don't want to make this a long episode, guys. We're going to get in and get out. Um, we have other things we need to take care of, but we wanted to update you guys with information that we do know I haven't shared with anybody. The prophetic message with regards to... Um, with regards to what I I emailed, I had a prophetic vision, which has been used on many missing person cases, active cops, have seen my emails where I say such and such is going to occur and then it does, or the person is X, Y, and Z place, and then they, they go there, they're there, et cetera. I'm known for this, and it's all in writing. I've been doing this since 1997. So I wrote President Trump when in 2020, it was... August 16, 2020, I wrote him through the White House email that's available to everyone. And I told him that there was an assassination attempt coming up um, at some point in his career. And that, um, uh, let's see, let me read it. I said, I told him about another impending assassination attempt that will be worse, but it will not prosper. However, to please have the Secret Service step up their game. Now, what I'm referring to is he had another attack, uh, an attempt on his life in 2016, yeah. which Dr. G will tell you about. But So that's what I'm talking about, another impending assassination attempt. It's going to be worse, and it was worse. <laughs> this was a lot worse than 2016 yeah. attempt on his life. And that it won't prosper as we all witnessed. Thank goodness for that. Um, and then prophetically it says Secret Service needs to step up their game. Now I didn't realize it until this all occurred that that is prophetic as well. That was a part of the vision that I believe Secret Service felt. I'm just going to be honest with how I feel. They're supposed to protect him. And... Yeah. I think if they were looking through one of them through their natural eyes, they would have seen him up there on top of the roof. That's correct. And this, like you said, Kimi, this was not the first attempt. The, the first attempt on Donald Trump's life was, oddly enough, uh, when he was a candidate, and it was in June 2016, in Las Vegas, I'm not going into great details. Yeah, they could Google it. Yeah, the 2016, it. Yeah, there's a but Wikipedia. But the odd thing is, he webpage. was a candidate then, and it was months before the election, and here he's a candidate again, and it's you months what, before Dr. the G? election, and both attempted assassins you know were 20-year-old males. You know what? It's almost been four years to the day that I wrote him the White House yep. about this. I, I was so scared because I said there is going to be an impending, um, you know, uh, assassination attempt on your life. And I was so scared that someone from the White House <laughs> was going to be calling me or Secret Service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thank God they never did. They probably ran her and went, oh, she's okay. I mean, I've worked with judges at the courthouse and I have, I have not even a ticket on my record. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, that came to pass almost four years to the day. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, and thank God no weapon formed against him prospered because he's a okay. believer as well, right? So we've talked about the two attempts on Donald Trump's life uh, by 20-year-old white males. Um, we've talked about your previous email to the White House. And now here's the other thing. You, yeah, I believe you I found his motive. You showed me something yes. that is it real you know, is it live? Is it Memorex? What is it like the old commercial? Right. Is it real? Uh, but I believe what so. did you find? I believe I found his motive. In which, if you Google it, FBI is constantly saying they don't know. That's their main thing they're trying to do, is to figure out his motive. They're trying to get into his phone. They haven't been able to get in. So maybe they'll find it in there. However, I did some digging around myself. Um... And I discovered that um, there's a Thomas Matthew Crooks with a SS point S at the end. 
and there's 297 posts, 645 followers, and 2,628 following. And you know how we can have on our profile, it's it's a private Instagram account, but you can have like on your profile, like a title that you're, let's say an attorney at law or whatever you want to write there. I'm a Pisces, you know, or whatever it is. He wrote, and I discovered, and I sent this to the FBI today. It says, I didn't do it for me. I did it for America, U.S. Or in the alternative, he does mean us. I don't know if it's U.S. Yeah, it's for the United tell. States or us, America S. And it's a private account. There's no way that somebody, they just came down with his name. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's no time to create this and in, in this account to mimic and make it fake so that you can think that, oh, this is his. And, and get 645 followers. Yeah. Plus, um, well, no, there's 2,628 following. Him. Right. And also other followers and um, 297 posts. This has to be real. So I took a picture of it. I sent it. The FBI has a special email for this case, an email address. So I sent it to them. I believe I found his motive. I do. Hmm. I wonder, have, have they taken it down yet or blocked it? I don't know. Interesting. And so I submitted that to the FBI this morning. And, I mean, there's a likelihood it's not real, but I believe it is real for the reasons I just said. Yeah, and it's up to them to find out. Now, the weird thing is, is that we're going to go. But a few things, food for thought. So they found bombs in his house as well as his car. His car. Now, I am a litigation trial paralegal. I do investigative work, um, finding people and information for lawsuits for the attorneys. And I use that account to search and find where he lives, who he lives with, etc., and I discovered that he has the same address as his parents. So if that's accurate information, I want to say that we put two and two together, guys. So you're trying to tell me that he was going to blow up his parents? If they truly live with him or he lives with them, and they found bombs in his house, that means that he wanted to kill his own parents? Wow. What in the world? And we also learned, I did investigative searching on the parent, the dad. He's a, a counselor of sorts. So this, you know, this doesn't make any sense of what his condition could be. They didn't find red flags in his background. There's nothing anywhere on his social media other than the one that I found and reported. that shows any kind of motive. Or that anybody could say that he's mentally ill. So this is going to be very interesting to learn when the FBI comes out with the information. Yeah, yeah. And he's drunk too, so clearly he was ho yeah. hoping to take out some first responders. Yeah, and we just want to um, continue to pray. And we're very sorry for people who have lost their lives that day or they were injured. We just want to say that our condolences to the family members um, and also... We're praying for everyone. I mean, I'm traumatized. I cried. <laughs> and I was really upset even the next morning. You know, this morning, I was upset and still crying. Because it's, you know, I did hospital ministry work, you know, ICU, ER, and, and, and ministering to people for 20 years to get better. And f I've never witnessed someone trying to kill somebody. You know, of course, in the movies we do, but that's acting. But to really see it before your own eyes and how traumatizing that is. It really was to me. I feel very traumatized from witnessing that. We were watching it live on TV when it all w w went down. And I even got up out of my chair and I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, I was really upset and um, crying and still, you know, upset over, over the weekend. I mean, excuse me, the next day. And it's traumatizing no matter if it was Biden or if it was a homeless man, or Trump, or whomever it is, it is a very traumatizing thing for us all to witness 
somebody trying to kill someone else, and especially, you know, Donald Trump. And so that was very upsetting to me. Yeah. Yeah, this is America, not South America. Yeah, that's what voting is for. You know, it's civil. Like the area of law that I'm in, I'm in civil law. You know, you, you go before the, you go in the court to handle things. You go to the, you go to vote to handle political issues. So is there anything else that you want to say? No, um, I think that covers it for now. Yeah, we and get we just, more information. we thank the Lord that, that um, former President Donald Trump is okay. And just like God told me that prophetic word, that it would not prosper. Right, right. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you all. We're going to talk to you on our next episode.